Okay, hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the history of craft guilds. Um, so first off, what is a craft guild? So a craft guild is an association of workers of the same trade for mutual benefit. A craft guild is very similar to uh, today's union shops. To work, at the, to work, the employee must be part of the group or of the union. And a craft guild can be any group of skilled workers that do the same craft. Um, back in the day, that'd be like masons, carpenters, tanners, painters, uh, and bakers. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the mutual benefit part of this. Um, so this has to be really important. Um, everyone has to be going for the same purpose. Um, they can't have anyone undercutting. Everyone has to be charging the same amount and giving the same quality of work or else a craft guild would not work. And this actually happened quite a bit. If someone was undercutting you, uh, the craft guild would just try to get rid of you, uh, force you out of town, get you arrested. And uh, it's very important that everything is mutual in, in the guild. So for in the Middle Ages, uh, guilds began at around 1100 AD, which is about halfway through the Middle Ages. And guilds were kind of like the first unions that we have today. So towns ensured qual town guilds ensured quality and set pay for their craft. Um, only members of the guild were allowed to sell their service, and non-guild members would be fined. Like I just mentioned, uh, non-guild members, if they were trying to undercut, uh, maybe if they even gave better quality work, um, they would be forced out if they would not join the guild. Um, so members of a craft guild were protected by the entire guild. And this means like uh, if a member of the guild were to pass away, the rest of the guild would pay for the, that person's family to still uh, live. They'd give them shelter, they'd give them food. And if members of the guild were um, like being transported to another town, uh, that guild would provide them safety so that they were not so that they wouldn't get robbed. Um, they really they protected their own kind and uh, they also were very powerful. Um, they actually had the ability to run some governments at some times and large towns could have several hundreds of these guilds all allowed to work on their specific craft. So just like I mentioned before uh, about how many different guilds there are, um, like a uh, uh, masons, carpenters, tanners, painters, bakers. Um, there were so many back in the day and they were all allowed to just do their specific craft. So also they were only allowed to do their specific craft. So if uh, like you say a tanner was also trying to do a little bit of uh, carpentry work on the side, the uh, carpentry guild would not be very happy about that and would probably try to get rid of them. So uh, in the guild, there are three levels, and at the very bottom is the apprentice, and that is where everyone starts out. So an apprenticeship can last for up to 14 years, um, and you can actually you could actually start at 12 years old. And by, as the time went on, uh, journeymen and master craftsmen actually looked for younger people to start in the guild because they would have more time to actually train them and get free, technically free label labor from them. Um, all they, all the apprentice got was the skills learned, food, clothing, and shelter. So through this entire period, they would help their uh, journeyman or master craftsman. Here's a journeyman or master craftsman appearing to work on a uh, what looks like a chalice, uh, possibly made out of like a clay, a ceramic, maybe glass. Um, see, he's doing actually all the hard work, well, all the the detail work. And then you have your apprentice here giving him the, uh, the material, unfinished, uh, still in the block. Um, and throughout the years, the apprentice will uh, learn these skills that the master craftsman slash journeyman knows. Um, but at the beginning, he will only be basically an unpaid laborer that does um, lots of the heavy lifting, maybe all the cleaning if they were like a baker. Um, but throughout the years, they learn the skills until they're... Uh, apprenticeship has ended. So once their apprenticeship has ended, they become a journeyman. So a journeyman is someone who has completed their apprenticeship and has proved that they are competent in the trade. Um, and now they actually are able to get paid. Um, journeymen are allowed to actually have an apprentice under them as well. So right after you complete your apprenticeship and prove that you are 
uh, worthy of working in the guild, you actually can take an apprentice on under you and do all the hard labor that you did before. So uh, during this time, as a journeyman, one would make a masterpiece uh, to try and gain the status of craft master builder. Um, they could do this, but they actually are not required uh, to make this masterpiece. They could actually stay as a journeyman their entire career after this. Um, but there are some benefits of becoming a master craftsman, and that is uh, they're allowed to have their own craft shop and build on their own. So. Having your own craft shop means you can uh, have employees under you, they can also have an apprentice under them, and it means that they are the highest level in the guild hierarchy. So they get paid more than a daily wage, and um, it, it just had lots of benefits um, compared to journeyman and especially apprentice. It was mainly money. So the follow craft guilds. Um, Around the 16th to 17th century, craft guilds took a decline, uh, mainly because of uh, innovations in technology, uh, steam-powered engines, the loom took over the textile industry, and uh, governments were kind of being reformed uh, during the Renaissance period. Uh, new markets started to show up and stole business from the guilds, um, mainly the textile industry, because the loom uh, made it far cheaper uh, than having someone hand sew all of the stuff together. You could just have a massive factory that's steam powered and running multiple looms, um, kicking it out all at once. Um, so craft guilds uh, tried to fight back, but they had been weakened and um, government, the new governments basically just abolished them. Um, and these were mainly in Europe, including France, Spain, Austria, Italy, and Germany. And the Industrial Revolution uh, put many guilds out of business just because they couldn't keep up. Um, so, uh, oh, let's go back. So what, what happened to the guilds is that the master craftsmen mainly became foremen and kind of, may, they may have run the plants um, of the the kind of business that they already ran. Journeymen became basically paid laborers. If they were in the textile industry, they may just become a loom operator. And then the apprentices were kind of just uh, let go. Um, if they had no skills, they couldn't really take over a job. Um, so they were kind of left away. So in the modern time, uh, there are still some guilds per se, um, and that would be electricians, stonemasons, plumbers, construction workers, uh, healthcare operators, carpenters, and welders. And uh, one thing about these apprenticeships now is that they actually get paid while they're working as an apprentice. Um, so it's like it's beneficial, and they still learn quite a lot of information. Um, one of the most important, I believe, is electricians. Um, uh, being an electrician can be very dangerous, especially if you're working in high voltage, high amperage areas. So it's very good uh, that they all have to take at least five years as an apprentice so they actually know all the safety precautions, what to look for, uh, how to not get killed, basically. Um, so I think that's very important on safety. Uh, welders also, uh, it's quite dangerous, especially if you're working in um, enclosed areas that there may be uh, combustible gases in it. Um, they also require an apprenticeship. I don't believe it's over five years though. So that is the end of my presentation and here are my sources. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much.